Um, in the United States, especially, and in the West generally, um, we have a model of self where um, the self is kind of like an avocado, right? And we have a pit inside of us. Um, the pit is our self, our essence, our identity. Um, it is the thing to which we must, above all, be true. Um, and of course, very importantly, we see that pit as unique. So that everything we do, it, we want to show, to reflect that pit, to reflect that self, and we want it to be unique. In Asia, they, people frequently have a flexi self. So it's a different kind of self. Um, it is a self that's oriented more to duty than to um, rights, for instance. And, um, and very importantly, it, it, is not, it does not have, have a cultural mandate to be different and to be unique. People in the East are not all alike, you know? So if you, know, if you looked at my family, like believe me, every single person is very, very different. And that is true, of course, throughout Asia. You know, the difference is not, you know, how different are we from each other? The difference is how much significance do we attach to that difference? In other words, do we think it's very important to, to differentiate ourselves from others? So if you ask, you know, are they individuals? Of course they're individuals. You know, are they different? Of course they are different. But of course, for them, it's like, well, of course I'm different. Why would I make a big deal of that, right? Um, and they think it is very peculiar that in the West that we feel that we must, um, you know, differentiate ourselves from others endlessly. So one of the ways that we do that, of course, is through choice. You know, choice in the West is very, very important. Everyone is always making choices. And honestly, a lot of those choices make us a little anxious. If you um, do a study where you are just sitting in an empty room and you're making a choice and you come from a more individualistic culture, you actually show signs of a little anxiety. You know, every little choice that you make, even in private, because it's, it's defining of you, you, who you are, is a little loaded. They feel like they just choose. You know? <laughs> in other words, when they make those choices, it doesn't have this overlay. And that's one of the reasons they feel that actually we are less, less free than they are. You know, so they think that we are the ones who are kind of in this prison where, you know, like I say, every moment we must define ourselves. Well, isn't that awful, right? And, you know, and of course, the way, the way that we live, um, we feel that, uh, you know, we want to be freely electing um, to, to live the way that we live, right? And so even when we're doing things like um, taking care of the elderly, for example. You know, we want to feel that, we, that it is an extension of our great love and um, the, the nature of our being to be able to take care of the elderly. Well, you know, the other day I was uh, having dinner with somebody who said, you know, I just don't feel that and it's just, it's just very, very hard. You know, so somebody from a more flexi self or interdependent culture would say, you know, it's just your duty, you know? And so for them, it's like, you know, they have their elderly parent. They just go take care of the elderly parent because that's their duty. For them, this is really liberating. You know, you just go do it. And you don't expect there to, you know, it's the expression of yourself, you know? It's just what people do. Um, from their point of view, we have made things very, very hard for ourselves to demand that, you know, that everything should be an expression of our inner nature. Mm -hmm.